Hello, I'm Kilogov2 Charlie, also licensed as the LZ1 AMA, and today I'm going to show you my portable radio station, which I use for HF, VHF, and UHF. Before I set up this HF station here, I used to operate portable activating parks using my ICOM 7100, which is a great HF, VHF, and UHF radio when paired with the right antennas. I have a VHF UHF antenna mounted on my car and also a vertical antenna for HF which I use with the tuner. The radio can go on at working at 100 watts for about 5 or 6 hours at least uh, before I run out of battery and I can extend that even longer using solar panels which I also carry in my car but that's a topic for another video. By the way if you like these technical videos and how to's Please subscribe for more. To make the station portable, I hold all equipment in a suitcase so I can easily take it out of the car and into the apartment, charge the batteries, swap some equipment and put it back into the car. Let's take a look at what's inside my suitcase. Okay, before we get into the suitcase, let's take a look at the batteries because I usually carry them separately. This is the latest edition that I have and it's a very nice big battery. Uh, Takes a very long time to charge it, but takes a very long time to discharge it also. Uh, comes standard with power pole connectors. I did get it directly from China, from AliExpress, and if you actually write in the comment when ordering, they can put the power pole for you. And this connector here is to charge the battery. Now the other battery that I have, uh, I, I did get it from the US, from a US manufacturer, uh, Bioeno. It's very popular among hams and preppers. It's uh, their lithium iron phosphate battery, 12 volts, uh, 12 amp hours, uh, and it does last me at least 3 hours up to 5 hours, really depends how I use the radio. And uh, that one also comes with power, well, it doesn't come with power poles, the, I think they make them with power poles these days. The power poles I added, it just comes with normal battery terminators. They do have a soft shell version of this one, which does come with a cable, uh, charging cable and power pole, just like my bigger battery that I got from China. So these are the two batteries that I use for the radio. I have another battery, uh, which is just a sealed lead acid battery. It's a small one, 4 amp hours, 12 volts. Uh, I don't need such a big one, but uh, this one was uh, pretty cheap anyway, and I got it to be uh, to charge my tuner, which I connect right next to my vertical antenna. Basically, the idea is uh, my antenna is not really tuned to any particular frequency. I use it on all frequencies, so I keep the tuner right next to the feed point of the antenna. That way I minimize my losses, and then I have coax running from the tuner and the antenna all the way to the car. Uh, in order to power the tuner, I put the antenna right next to it, and once I open this, you will see, you know, how that works. The antenna, by the way, is just a piece of antenna wire with a PO25, uh, sorry, SO239 chassis connector soldered directly to it. And I do carry some tools, uh, which I have found useful sometimes, uh, just uh, multi-tools like pliers and knives and stuff like that. Over here, in the other compartment, uh, I do have the coax, so it's just a RG58 uh, with PL259 on one side, uh, that's the side that I connect to the antenna. I do have some ferrites, the snap-on ferrites on the coax, and on the other side I have a BNC connector, which you might find a bit unusual, but if you see my video on BNC connectors, well, you will see why. I just love BNC connectors, they're just great for portable operation, so easy to connect and disconnect on the go. Okay, let me put the wires back in. Basically, antenna wire and coax are the ones in the outside pocket. All the equipment is separately inside. That way, the wire, the long wire and the coax don't get tangled up with the other stuff. Okay, a decent pair of, uh, of headphones. Uh, it's important because uh, I operate portable. Very often there's other noises and I don't want those noises to distract me and I don't want other people to be listening to what I'm talking about. Well, what I'm hearing. They do hear what I'm talking about, I guess. Uh, these can work wirelessly over Bluetooth, but they also have a connector over here uh, for just a standard audio cable. Uh, the next thing in the chain after the battery is this one. It's a very cheap one. You can get, get it on eBay or Amazon or, well, many other places. Uh, I did put the connectors on it, the power pole connectors. 
basically measures how much power I'm using and I know the capacity of the battery and I, that way I know how much power I have left. The next thing is my LDG Auto Tuner. Uh, I've tried using a manual tuner but I just hate walking over to the antenna every time I have to change the band or the frequency a lot. So I use this and I really like the interface on this one because I can see the SWR very easily. Uh, if I'm looking at it on the desk, obviously when I'm operating portable and it's away where my antenna is, I don't really see it, but at least when I'm setting it up and I'm powering it up, I can see that it's working. Because, uh, uh, you know, when I press uh, the buttons, I can see the lights light up, so I know it's powered. Now, as far as power, it can get powered from the battery like I do, or it can get powered directly from the radio or controlled by the radio. I don't really do that. I just use its automatic uh, sensing function uh, for that, and it works fine for me. A battery saving tip, by the way, for this tuner, once you've, you've tuned, you can disconnect the power, and as long as you don't need to retune, it ma maintains its settings. Uh, the relays uh, stay where they are. So that way you can keep operating for as long as you want without having to apply power. And for the antenna, by the way, I have adapted it to my BNC connector, basically by using an adapter. Because the connector here is SO239, and I have my PL2592 BNC adapter here. And for the radio, right now, I have just the regular SO239. Sometimes I put an adapter here as well, sometimes not, depends. Um, oh, securing the antenna. You saw the wire I was uh, using. Basically, I use a very, very long fishing pole. Uh, I think about 10 or 11 meters right now. It used to be 12 meters, but well, it broke and now it's shorter. Uh, to secure the wire along it, I use masking tape. Uh, masking tape is very suitable for that because it doesn't leave residue after you remove it. I've tried duct tape and things like that, but they get sticky. The masking tape is cleaner to remove. And when you use a pole, you want uh, the connections between the separate pieces to be pretty clean. And, you know, that hold holds the antenna. And also, when you, if you make those connections exactly where the pole pieces are, it, help, uh, it helps prevent them from collapsing on you from wind, for example. So, you know, once you deploy the antenna, it keeps it deployed better. Okay. Now, the radio. The radio I like is the ICOM 7100. Oop, as the card's coming out. <laughs> uh, it's an HF radio, 100 watts. It also has VHF and UHF, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, has two separate connectors, one for HF, one for VHF and UHF. Uh, that's the tuner port. And basically it has a remote head. It, you cannot mount the head on it. One of the nice features I love is the SD card where I can memorize uh, some uh, voice calls like my CQ call and stuff like that. So I don't have to keep repeating, repeating CQ Worldwide Flora Fauna and stuff like that. I can just have it recorded here and have it auto CQ for me, which is very nice. Saves my voice a lot. Okay, let's see. Uh, a patch cable. If the antenna wire is not long enough, this uh, helps me connect that. Uh, let's see what else. Some power cables. Uh, power cables to connect uh, the radio, I guess, and uh, some of the other batteries that I have. And also a very short Ethernet cable in case something happens to the cable between the radio and the control head. This is the ICOM cable for controlling the radio. It's a very nice cable, you know, it's, uh, it's not stiff. Even at cold temperatures, it's not stiff. So they did a great job with that. Oh, here's the audio cable for uh, the headset that I use. That's the cable that chipped with it. I found that the headset is really not RF protected, so I did add a choke on the cable, which helps tremendously. But still on 40 meters and 80 meters, I have problems. Uh, I should replace that headset someday, but it hasn't been a priority. Okay, moving on. A screwdriver with different heads, you know. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you need to make adjustments to things. Radio wire. Basically, it's a set of, a set of uh, four radios. Of course, more would be better, but four is sufficient uh, for my operation. I do use a vertical antenna, and, you know, verticals require radios, really. 
And I have made an easy way to connect it basically. Uh, if you take a look here, you know, I've put a connector on it and some uh, nuts and bolts and washers. And that way I can connect it to the SO239 chassis connector uh, very easily. Okay. What do we have here? Oh, that's the power cable for the radio. You know, just your usual power cable uh, with some fuses. I sometimes carry a backup power cable. And here's my power cable for the battery that powers the tuner. This is the port that LDG uses. And I just connect the wires directly to the battery terminals right now. Uh, not the best way to do it, but uh, it does work. If you think about it, I have one battery which is at the radio, which power, you know, the lithium iron phosphate battery, or batteries rather, and the other battery, the sealed lead acid battery that I showed you, which is at the antenna, and that's uh, for that battery. Here I have some power cord uh, with a weight, or rather with an insulator, which I have used before to support my antenna off of trees. But uh, these days I don't have to do that because I just carry the collapsible pole and that takes care of that. And um, Oh, here's the power uh, cable connecting the antenna to the tuner. It's just a very short cable uh, with uh, a ferrite on it. I don't need a long cable, I told you, the antenna is not resonant, so I really want to shorten the coax that runs between the antenna and the tuner to basically bring it to 50 ohms as soon as possible. This is the control head for the radio. I keep it in a bag so water doesn't get in there. I mean, I don't get water in the suitcase at all, but, you know, in case something happens, just, you know, an additional measure of protection. Two is one and one is none, you know. Uh, this is the control head for the radio. You know, touchscreen controlled with a very nice knob. I really like the knob on this radio. I even like it more than the knob on the 7300. <laughs> okay. Let's see what else we've got. We're nearing the end of it, actually. Ah, the microphone. I got the HM151, but not the default one, because uh, I first tried the microphone that came with the radio, and I really wasn't happy with the results. So I got this microphone after that, and I did get the upgrade by Bob Nagy. I'm forgetting his call sign right now, but I can put it up. And wow, his, uh, his upgrade to the microphone really works well. Now, I, I mean, uh, I, I didn't have to do anything. Just plugged it in and, you know, that was it. I forgot about trying to use another microphone. I've tried different headsets and external microphones. And I have been able to get it working, uh, but not in a way that was convenient for portable operation. Um, you know, working with a headset and a microphone on that one uh, was convenient for working at home but not so convenient for working portable. And this microphone really changed things for me. <laughs> okay, and the last piece of the puzzle is this USB cable. It's just a mini USB to USB, and you might be wondering why do I need a USB cable for portable operation? Well, the ICOM 7100 has a built-in sound card and CAT control via USB. So all I need is this cable to my laptop which I also bring, and that one lasts like five to seven hours. And I can do my logging on that one and use WSJT or uh, PSK31, digital modes. I could do WinLink, all kinds of fun stuff. So that's why I bring it. Okay, and the only piece I haven't showed you is the antenna. That will be for an upcoming video. If you wanna see more, please subscribe, and I'll show you how I build that one and how it works. Thanks for watching. 7-3 from Kilo Golf 2 Charlie, also licensed as LZ1 AMA. Bye bye, until next time.